Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Jumoro Hashi and I'm program specialist coming from UNESCO headquarters working for education for sustainable development. Welcome to the concurrent session, which is actually the first of the series. Uh, we will be looking at the issue related to curricula, pedagogy and assessment. Um, I briefly would like to explain that actually uh, the initial moderator, Mr. Ido, he's unfortunately uh, not available uh, because of the last minute commitment, so please allow me to replace him. And we also invited the colleague from IBE who will conclude after uh, the whole session towards the end. So just uh, allow me to introduce uh, the context of this particular session. Uh, UNESCO's member states have been promoting and putting into practice uh, this concept of transformative education as we have also heard in the previous plenary session. And uh, all countries highlight the role of education under different names, uh, but all to build a set of knowledge, skills, values and attitudes so learners can take informed decisions and actions to respond to uh, the local global challenges in social economic, but also environmental dimensions. This set of competencies have been discussed as transversal competencies or sometimes called 21st century skills. For example, UNESCO uh, in 2017, we did uh, uh, some research and we defined, we came up with eight competencies as key for sustainability. For example, system thinking, anticipatory, collaboration, critical thinking, and so on. In order to make transformative education effective, it is critical to include these competencies into the teaching and learning, while of course addressing the cognitive as well as social, emotional, and behavioral dimensions in a holistic, integrated way. But how can be this delivered? That is the big question of today. And this session, um, uh, together with also other speakers I will introduce shortly, we will discuss how the competencies can be included in the curricula, pedagogy and assessment. And we will look into some uh, existing good practices. So here I would like to introduce uh, uh, my team they are all on screen and also uh, we have the pleasure to have uh, Dr. Cho, uh, Professor Sun Sin Women's University, Republic of Korea. But we have um, Dr. Esther Kerr, University of Melbourne, Ms. Lindena Esak, Senior Education Officer, Department of Education Services from the Ministry of Education of Seychelles, and Dr. Chinan Karame Chaya, she is the principal at Almana Modern School, which is UNESCO Associated Schools based in Lebanon. So uh, before going to the different presentations, I first would like to turn to our audience who is listening to this session. We have prepared uh, one actually question to you. If you could put up this slido on the screen, please. Okay, so um, I think by now many of you may know how to use it, but please use one device and either you can print this uh, QR code or also just uh, type slido.com and the code to use for this survey is 135116. The question we have prepared for the audience is the following. What individual competency is most important but missing in the current teaching and learning for social transformation? So here we have eight elements. I will read it through. Systems, thinking, competency, critical thinking, system thinking, anticipatory, uh, normative, strategic. I think I didn't miss anything. So 
Among these eight competencies that UNESCO defined as the basic competencies for sustainability, what are, maybe you could choose two, uh, the most important, you think, but missing, unfortunately, in the current teaching and practices. Maybe we can give uh, two minutes for you to think and react. So I will wait one more minute. All right. So, um, maybe I will try to comment. It's interesting to see um, initially critical thinking was at the top, but now it is replaced by integrated problem solving competency. I think in some of the presentations I have heard also in plenary and also in the moderated conversation, it is very, very important to have this critical thinking, but then also to take actions. I think uh, integrated problem solving competencies is really key so that uh, learners can take this informed decision and actions. Uh, so this is just to, you know, uh, to bring you to this world of competencies. But without further ado now, I would like to invite uh, the first speaker, Dr. Esther Kier, she will talk about uh, um, what competencies, how to teach and assess. Esther, you have the floor. Thank you very much, John. And good day, everybody. So I'm hoping my slides will come up now. And while that's happening, I think I can see it now. Um, obviously, we're talking about transformative education. So transforming the way that young people are guided in their learning, becoming independent, and knowing that they have the skills to find out what they want and need to know. So this does sound, as Jun was just mentioning, very much like a 21st century skills infused orientation. So I plan to talk about the how and the what of transformative education and take a moment to look at where we are today. Next slide, please. So first of all, the how. We, we know that we need alignment within our education systems for these to work coherently. So we have curriculum, we have pedagogy, we have assessment, all of these being interdependent. The idea is that the learning goals that we set actually determine how each of these three contributing parts of the delivery system need to be thought about together, need review. So if we change the learning goals, we need to not only change the curriculum, but we need to look at pedagogy. We need to look at assessment each time because the nature of the learning goals in some senses determines how we approach learning and teaching. So learning goals determine curriculum, what is to be taught influences how to teach, as well as the development of the assessment strategies. So the introduction of 21st century skills in particular brings our attention to the need for a whole school approach, where there are consistent practices and orientations throughout a school. And why do I mention 21st century skills? Because if we want to transform the outcomes of education, we can't afford the traditional silo nature of disciplinary divisions in schools. 
we need to be looking at a whole school approach to education. So next slide, please. We need to move to an overarching view of what basic education is designed to deliver. Now, our focus for many, many years has been on knowledge acquisition with strong acknowledgement that to acquire knowledge, we do need foundational skills like literacy and numeracy. But those foundational skills have been still all about enabling the consumption of information and the ability to manage that information. Transformative education moves us beyond this to facilitate the building of knowledge and the ability to benefit from creative manipulation of that knowledge. And so we move to transversal competencies, such as problem solving, critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, and so on. At the moment, we have the vast majority of education system systems sitting up in the top left hand corner of this screen. We have some sitting in the middle with increasing recognition of what's been termed soft skills, breadth of skills, general capabilities and so on, but still strongly looking to the perspectives of the past and with the balance towards knowledge, literacy and numeracy. And then we can move on to what could be in the bottom left, sorry, bottom right of the screen and think about how these three areas interact. Knowledge remains pivotal because it is knowledge that we use to make decisions with, that we solve problems with, that we interrogate and that we build on. But as in this figure, we need to see these foundational skills the transversal competencies and knowledge as interdependent with all of them being necessary. Next slide, please. So this inter interdependence has been, I think, fairly tragically brought to the fore by the pandemic. For example, the pandemic has brought to our attention some limitations of traditional education environments in the classroom as many countries seek to provide remote learning opportunities. So the traditional, the teacher directed approach that is characterized as we see here, structured daily schedules, uh, clarity on how much time students should spend on tasks, um, teachers explaining learning objects, uh, teachers giving immediate feedback to students. All of this, of course, has been replaced for many, many of our young people. Click please. However, we can see very clearly now that this approach doesn't prepare young people for self-directed learning, for managing their own time, for thinking through how to solve their own problems and persevere in the face of difficulty. Um, how to find different and creative ways of dealing with their own learning materials, or even having the confidence to approach their studies in ways that they can manage independently. And all of those processes and activities are the essence of 21st century skills and transformative education. Next slide, please. So a challenge confronting us is how to provide guidance to our young people in this overall general transformative education context, as well as in the current crisis. And if you look at this slide, what can you see here? Well, over on the right hand side, you see engagement in learning. You see engagement of students with each other. You see engagement of students with their teachers and you see the students building knowledge together. And so this interaction, this is part of the support structures that many students, although not all, have been typically fortunate to have in the past, pre-pandemic, engaging with each other, engaging with materials, engaging with thought. So when that support is taken away, 
what do they have? And we, I'm not sure if you should click here or not. Try a click. Um, and what we can see here is some of the sorts of materials that have been developed by many countries for remote learning opportunities. And the idea has been let's slim down curricula, let's focus on what is most essential in learning. But the problem still exists that we have children sitting alone at home or with their parents with a host of learning materials that have not necessarily been designed for learning in a non-scaffolded environment, for an environment where you don't have teachers. So again, what we need for these students is preparation for independent learning. How to make sense of reading materials if you don't understand them immediately and you don't have a teacher there? How do you move past a click and select and a cut and paste? So for all of these reasons, whether it's now in the pandemic or more broadly, we need some transformation of education that is focused on exploration, on self-efficacy, and on critical thinking. Next slide, please. So what stands in the way of all of that, those visions? And here I have some obstacles, but also some facilitating factors. So many of us still hold reasonably outdated views of education. There is though increasing recognition that learning to learn must be prioritised. There's simply too much knowledge for students to acquire in school. So they need the skills to know how to acquire that knowledge independently. We can see another obstacle. In some countries there have been inadequate resources to provide a full basic education to all, leading to, unfortunately, competitive structures, which can disenfranchise very large proportions of young people from moving through the education system. There are facilitators. So you can see here, there's much greater valuing of the non-routine. In other words, activities that require us to be dynamic, responsive, proactive, thinking about different ways of doing things. So we have recognition now that many of our daily experiences, as well as the big global problems, these require non-routine capabilities based in creative thinking, problem solving and so on for us to resolve them. And one sort of negative um, phenomenon actually has a positive side, which is that we have growing dissatisfaction with the outcomes of our current education systems. And that again has encouraged us to think a little more broadly about newer conceptualizations of education and shifting learning goals. Next slide, please. So this is not all actually just about mm, conceptual or wishful thinking, this is happening. Obviously it's happening to different degrees in different places, but what we can see here is a, a graph that we put together about five years ago in 2016. And at that time, we could see that curricula were increasingly including 21st century skills as a carrier for transformative education for a breadth of skills, breadth of curriculum. And this study that we completed was analysis of vision and mission statements and curricula initially from 131 countries. And it indicated very, very clearly that national education systems were broadening their educational provision to include skills such as communication, creativity, critical thinking, and so on. And the majority of the countries identified those skills as valuable. And in an extension of this Brookings study a couple of years later, where we then had 161 countries, we found similarly over 70% of them were indicating these sets of goals. 
again, a lot of this is aspirational. A lot of it might be surface, but it's the beginning of a wave that we're seeing increasingly worldwide. Next slide, please. So there's no doubt that we're on a path to transformation, like any path. Some of the, I think, some of the most rewarding and some of the most informative events we experience along the way, along the path, along that journey. And those experiences help us to make more sense of the end point and probably the fact that the original end point is not an end point at all, but the continuation of a larger vision. So I'm looking forward um, today to hearing my colleagues speak about some of those events, some of those experiences along that path that will show us that we are well on our way to a new goal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Esther for your very comprehensive, uh, as usual, overall um, guidance, introductory presentation. You covered so many different things, but especially ingredients, which are really necessary to consider what to do about the transformative education, transversal competencies, approaches to consider, how to engage learners, but especially this alignment uh, in order to really implement what is in curriculum, how to uh, take this forward to practice. You also touched upon some gaps like lack of vision, resource, understanding of the nature of skills and so on. I think it was really uh, helpful to us, for us to contextualize our discussion. Now I would like to, thank you very much, uh, Esther. I would like to now invite uh, uh, Ms. Lindina Esak from Seychelles. Um, she has been leading a quite interesting, innovative uh, project, which is now, um, I understood, uh, really the whole country is implementing about uh, sustainability and the way they try to integrate this uh, transformative elements of learning into curricular pedagogy and assessment. So, Lindina, you have the floor. Okay, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. So, as soon as I see my slider, I can start. Okay, so I'm going to talk a, a bit about uh, the Eco School program. Um, it all started in 1994. And it was a project which was piloted in some of the state schools. The aim of it was to engage teachers and students in the environment learning and the greening of school ground, as well as environmental management practices in the different extracurricular activities. Now, the project itself became successful in the early 21st century when it changed to become a program. So it's uh, been 25 years since it's been in existence and it is one of the most successful program in education and uh, it has been reviewed over the years also. Next slide, please. Um, as mentioned, it is the only sustainable school program in Seychelles and what it aims to do, it has a whole school approach and it integrates sustainability in the daily operations of schools. And it is a program that does not only concern teachers. So we have teachers, students, and every member of the community coming together to implement the program. Next slide, please. So it is a compulsory program. So every school has to implement this program. And we also send an invitation for private school to join. And all of them managed to join it since uh, 2019 when we launched it for the private schools. So many of the activities, competitions on ESD, they are sent 
to all the schools, including the tertiary education institution. So it's not only in primary and secondary schools that we have the program, but we also try to integrate ESD in tertiary education. So we send invitation to them to participate in any activities related to ESD. So I would like to mention the Seychelles Institute of Teacher Education, which is a tertiary education, where we have a short environment course for every teachers which is following the course for diploma. So they have to follow this course on ESD. And this course, it has an element of assessment in it where we get them to think about uh, an environmental problem, which is affecting especially Seychelles and globally. So they come together as a group and do their presentation and they submit a portfolio. Um, this is very important, which I will talk about later. So schools try to find ways also to, to look at the different sustainable development strategies. So we are lo looking at the global action program and also the different sustainable development strategy which Seychelles has. Next. So the program itself, it aims to address ESD relevant themes on end issues. So these are the things which is relevant to the Seychelles. We have climate change, which is very common, especially affecting small island developing states like Seychelles. Um, water, we have waste, energy, healthy living, biodiversity, soil and air, livelihood, cultural heritage, ocean and coast. So these are the 10 themes we tend to look at and also the disaster risk reduction. Next slide, please. So this is the criteria. So we have the Eco School program and we have to evaluate the program to see and assess it, to see if the schools have been able, able to implement the program. So these are the criteria we look at. So the administration and management practices, the environmental management practices, the environmental learning and network and partnership. So I will go in more details on the criteria. So when we look at administration and management, so yes, next slide. So when we look at administration and management, we are seeing we are overseeing the implementation of the eco school program in the schools. So we see how the administration and management, um, what role do they play in trying to implement the eco school program? So we have uh, we call them the eco school leaders. Um, previously, we called them school environmental leaders, which is our focal person for Eco School and which is the chairperson of a committee. So each school, they have a person responsible to implement the program in their um, respective schools. So they have a committee, so they set up a committee where it is led by the Eco School leader. And we have different people on management, which will be represented on the committee. We also have people, um, the students, we also have parents on the committee, we have people from the wider community on the committee, and we may have other partners on the committee of the school. So they will come together to discuss um, how to implement the Eco School program. So they have an action plan they will do every year on how to implement the program in their respective schools. So as I mentioned now, this committee, they have to meet regularly they have to plan they have to implement monitor and evaluate the integration of activities and projects and they do this through communication doing meetings discussions and decision making and then they take actions next slide please so when we evaluate the part where we see environmental management practices we see how the schools are managing their resources so namely how are they managing water how are they managing energy and solid waste? And also we look at the land. So we look at the school grounds. So when we come to the schools for the practices, these are the things we will look at. So we will look at the cleaning methods and materials they are using. Are they environmentally friendly? We will look at pest management. Also how the school are addressing pests. Next slide. So when we look at environmental learning, we are assessing this part, we look at curriculum planning. So are the school making use of the national curriculum, the teaching and learning program when they um, are planning or they are preparing their family plans? 
Um, we also have a calendar of activities which we send where we have the different team days. We have national team days and a lot of international um, team, team days related to the environment. So the school itself, they can do certain activities in line with the team days. And we also, from the Ministry of Education, can send different activities that we can come up with our pa different partners. We can organize and send it to the school to participate. And we also look at how school make use of environmental learning support materials, which we receive many times from our donation, which are our partners, um, which gives us different resources related to ESD. Next slide, please. So when we are talking about curriculum, these are the different subjects of the curriculum. And school has to make sure they implement and they integrate ESD inside each of these uh, specific subjects. And these are the ways they can do it. They can do it in maths, they can do it in social science, they can do it in all the different subjects. So it is integrated in all subjects in the curriculum. Next slide, please. So to continue, when we look at environmental learning, we are also looking at co-curricular activities. So we do have clubs, which uh, students, they participate in, which is outside of the curriculum time. So outside of the school hours. So we look at if school does have these clubs and if students are um, doing activities in these clubs related to ESD. And we also look at the different environment projects which the school is engaged in. Next slide. So we do have the other aspect or criteria where we assess the school, which is called network and partnership. So on this note, we look at the school partnership with parents and the wider community where they support the school either with educational resources or they support environmental learning, they facilitate classroom activity, and also there's presentation funding for projects to name a few. So it's very important that they have this partnership be it locally with the wider community or with other schools or with other partners nationally. And we also look at internationally, how are they partnering with other organizations? Next slide. So this one is showing a little bit about the program itself, where you see there's the learning which is taking place inside and outside the classroom. So this is one of the things which the programs does in the schools. So next slide, please. So we make use of ap appropriate methods and learning. So we have different, different learning materials, which we, we, we sometimes gain from our partners or we ourselves um, together with our um, leaders, um, eco-school leaders, we can try to come up with the different resources which we can use when we address ESD in schools. So here you can see some example where students are actually using some of these resources. Next slide, please. And this is managing and improving the physical surround of the schools, which I mentioned. So we have seen that when we have such a program, we have seen greener school grounds like these ones. Next slide, please. And I've mentioned how they manage resources such as water, energy, and waste. And so this is an example of rainwater harvesting, which we are trying to have in all the schools. So we have a lot of schools that have the rainwater harvesting system, which help to manage water. We also have schools also that has solar panels and they have different strategies also to try and reduce the amount of water and energy they use. And this is something we assess when we, um, when we go to the schools. And also waste, we see how they reuse, reduce the waste or recycle some of the waste. Next slide, please. So this is the part where they participate in national campaign, festival and competitions. So we, exp we expose them to these different competitions, to their different activities related to ESD. And by doing so, we get them engaged in the different activities where they develop skills, knowledge, critical thinking, inquiry learning. So all of these, they then learn to appreciate what they have been blessed with and 
be able to take critical actions and informed decisions to bring about transformative learning or the change that we want to see in a world where we think about future generations. So we expose them to this to enable them to acquire the knowledge and skills they will need. Next slide, please. So in the end, how, how do we do it? So we have the Eco School Award. So the Eco School Award, it's done every year where we assess how schools implement the program. Now, what the schools has to do, they have to prepare a presentation and submit a portfolio to us, Ministry of Education. So I am the focal person which coordinates everything. So as I mentioned, we do have an eco-school leader which can come and do the presentation and they have to oversee that in the school and make sure they submit their portfolio. So we have a judge, a set of judge, which is maximum four, and I am not um, part of the judging team. Mm -hmm. So they have to assess the schools using the given criteria, which I mentioned earlier. Now, when we have this criteria, um, they sit down, they analyze everything. Now we place the schools on the different level, level one, two, or three, according to the total points obtained. One, we look at participation in the national, international competitions. So when they participate in any competitions that we have sent, it has to be national. So we've sent it to all the schools. They gain participatory points. Now, apart from participation points, they also gain points if there are students that come out first, second, and third in the competitions. Now, by doing so, we, will, we see that most of the school participates in the activities and they get the students to participate in the activities because they know they will get participation points. So, and also we have different campaigns. We have the presentation, which I mentioned they have to do. We have the portfolio that has the evidence of the work they've done. And we also conduct school visits. Next slide, please. So this is uh, one we, that we have just done just now. So from 8th November to the 19th of November, we just did, we just were assessing the schools for the Eco School program. So we do it every year, but because of COVID-19, it's the first time we've done it over three year lapse time. So we used to do it every year, but now we've given the chance for school to be able to be more creative and also to be more, to be able to adapt to the COVID-19 situation and come up with new ideas, new projects, new ways of doing things. So we've given them the time for them to be able to do the different activities. So we have judged them over a three year period of time. And here you can see the schools are doing their presentation. You can see the team of judges there and you can see that students also do the, the presentation. So the eco school leader can do it. Somebody on the eco school committee can do the presentation. And we can, we also have students. We encourage students to do, to do the presentation. So we know that yes, the students have acquired certain knowledge, skills and understanding of the program. Next slide. So this is the school portfolio that they have to submit. And inside you will see all the activities and the meetings that the Eco School has conducted. So action plan is there, all the information, evidence. So this serves as evidence of work done related to ESD. Next slide. So these are the school visits, which uh, we did this year again. So you can see the judges going around to actually see whether these schools have actually done what they presented because they did the presentation, they submit their portfolio, they can say, ah, I'm managing waste, um, I'm managing water, um, the kids know um, that they have to, every time they, they leave the room, they have to switch off the fan, the teachers know about this. So we have to see it for ourselves. So what we do, we conduct the visit. So the judges actually go there to see for themselves if what they have presented, it's truly happening in the schools. And this is when we will see um, if, yes, we, um, if they say they put stickers, they are saying that uh, um, switch off the fans or use water wisely. So we go there to see that happening. We can also, if we see students, we can question them. Um, and you see um, the pictures in the middle, 
there is a student there. So the student is guiding the judges to explain the different projects in the schools and showing us that them as the students, they are doing their part. Next slide. So, Lindina, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you because it's so impressive to have all these uh, um, concrete uh, yeah. actions, but can you try to wrap up? Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Um, I'm just going to finish. So we have the three different uh, level and the highest level, as you can see, based on the points, um, are level three and they will get the green flag. So every year they get the flag, they get the certificate, they get the cash prize. And also, if they do very well, the top schools, they get a chance to visit Aldabra, which, are, which is a World Heritage Site. Next slide. So this is an example of the Eco School Award, where you see the, the ministers there and the students and school receiving the prizes. Next slide, please. And at the end, they do the exhibition where they have their portfolio and all the different projects and activities they have done so that people everywhere can come and see. Next slide, please. So we also have other prizes. This is for wastewater, managing wastewater and energy. Next slide, please. And this is a picture of the World Heritage Site, Aldabra, which is known to be like an Eden um, so on the earth, so everybody's a paradise on earth. So everybody dreams of going there. And, they, and if they do well, the schools, the students and teachers get a chance to visit this uh, place, which uh, even rich people in Seychelles have not been able to, to go there. So this is truly um, a blessing to have this privilege. Next slide, please. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lindina. Congratulations. This is really beautiful uh, example also of the commitment from the Ministry of Education and really nice to see how it's implemented in a very um, participatory manner. And you also touched upon the issue of whole school approach, maybe which will take us now to the next presenter, uh, Dr. Chinan Karamechaya. Uh, principal of the U uh, UNESCO Associated School, sorry, based in Lebanon. You have the floor. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Good day, everyone. It is really an honor to be in this significant conference and to share how implementing transformative education through ESD whole school approach would empower learners to see the social world through a value-based lens and to challenge and change the status quo as leaders and agents of change. In Lebanon, we are facing cumulative inconveniences at different levels, political insecurity, economic crisis, and consequently, social inequality, discrimination, and much more. In addition to that, COVID pandemic is still a threat for well-being. These inconveniences have developed learners who feel insecure and lack confidence with the governance system and with the ineffective and with the effect, effective implementation of peace and justice. As well, these inconveniences haven't only entailed learners, but also teachers and administrators, as their teaching job alone wouldn't be enough to satisfy their basic needs for living. Within this whole context, Al-Manar Modern School in Lebanon continues to implement transformative education, which is being considered the most effective education that should be delivered within this context. Through ESD Lens, we set the profile of the active citizen whom our country needs to develop sustainably. We definitely considered the ESD competences adopted by UNESCO and have been just mentioned by John. Our learner, the active citizen, is prepared to be first, well knowledgeable with a deeper understanding of sustainable norms and values, a critical thinker who can evaluate the context based on SD norms, a good researcher who is able to collect valid and reliable data, an innovator, problem solver, social, a social entrepreneur who can create sustainable solution, model them and have project management skills to implement in real life, and a value-based leader who is in a regular self-reflection and evaluation, striving for greater self-awareness and can influence others, plan strategically and do effective partnerships for implementing sustainable solutions and developing awareness campaigns. 
Knowing that this cannot be reached without reinforcing students' well-being, we adopted social emotional learning competences addressed by CASEL that were self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. Having set our vision, planning for its implementation started. <clears throat> we have set a clear policy where structures, practices, and even consequences are explicit and well articulated with ESD values and norms. We adopted understanding by design approach to design our unit plans based on the social, economic, environmental, and even political happenings to equip learners with all their needs to overcome the current context at different levels, personal level, community level, national level, and even global level. The unit plans definitely involved inquiry-based instructional designs with the most effective technologies, problem-oriented performance tasks or projects, including STEM, learning activities that deepen students' understanding, uncover perspective, develop empathy, and reinforce 21st century skills, and authentic action-oriented assessments that don't only measure students' knowledge and skills, but they as well measure their attitudes through their decision-making processes and personal reactions towards the context. A genuine entrepreneurship course for secondary classes has been developed where students translate their sustainable models into business plans by the end of the academic year, and through exhibitions, they present their solutions to potential investors. Through this course, we partner with two NGOs in Jazz and Riyadh to reinforce the students' integration of SDGs into their business plans and to provide them with more chances to expose their projects nationally and internationally through competitions. A life skills course was developed to middle school students where value-based leadership, emotional intelligence, and agency are reinforced through various activities and discussions. Consequently, we induced a multidisciplinary ESD approach where all subject teachers are dealing with the same context, but from their subject's perspective. We've started coaching sessions with low achieving students to help them set their visions to develop and reinforce different executive function skills to master their learning journey. A wellness club has been developed for KG students a student e-magazine for high students, high school students was launched, and it is considered as a platform to have their voice heard. As well, a student council is in the process of development during this academic year. This process has started with an awareness discussion in partnership with Advanced Democracy for Sustainable Peace NGO. The discussion about effective electoral systems was held with our high school students and this will be followed by a, few, a new step, which is training a group of high school students to develop the most convenient school electoral system for the development of the student council. In addition to that, a school community service has been, sorry, uh, has been launched with high school students where in specific sessions they design different fun and purposeful activities to perform with elementary and KG students reinforcing values and well-being. We develop a systemized homeroom program where homeroom teachers reinforce a positive and clear classroom environment where justice and rule of law prevail. This program orients homeroom teachers for K-60 classes to deliver an interactive SEL, social emotional learning lesson, each week and collect data and share it with the administration. This system reinforces a parents' partnership and involvement, where the program coordinator meets the parents with different experts and share with them the SEL theme addressed and the practical tips to be done at home to support the students' well-being based on the data collected. As well, we partnered with a Transformation Lebanon initiative where we got introduced to the Global Priority Solutions Values and the John Maxwell Roundtable Strategy to reinforce a value-based leadership with that ignites the self-evaluation of daily practices of values. We were pioneers 
in initiating three clubs at school. One for students, one for, for alumni students, and one for parents, where we started reinforcing the values within the whole school community. Now, this program is integrated into our middle and secondary classes and in a neighborhood school for learning difficulties and special needs, whom we support to replicate our experience. Now, I guess you are wondering how, as a school principal, I'm evaluating our implementation of transformative education and what my success indicators are. I will give you a few examples. One of them, last week, our high school students celebrated National Independence Day by developing an awareness campaign to lower class students, reinforcing good governance and anti-corruption. Second example, during her school community service in grade two class, one of our high school students observed a bullying issue on, among one of the students in the class. So she shared a story about a girl who was bullied. As a result, the girl who was really bullied in class was welcomed by her classmates. Third example, our grade 10 student, Jasmine Rabah, represented Lebanese youth in COP26 through her virtual speech to policymakers. And recently, Al Manar Modern School has been honored with the prestigious Climate Action Project School of Excellence Award 2021-2022 because of the intense work done on climate education and a whole school approach. Finally, all this requires continuous professional development that tackles the contextual needs of all school stakeholders. The school system of professional development for teachers is based on teachers' self-evaluation. Through this process, teachers use a rubric that addresses school's policy expectations relevant to its vision. After the self-evaluation, teachers develop their professional development annual SMART goals and work on achieving them within a culture of coaching by administration and by peers. By the end of the academic year, Teachers' self-evaluation reports are submitted to the administration, who in turn recognize teachers for their professional progress and give them the opportunity to share their achievements in front of their colleagues. As a result, we are so proud of having a team of educational pioneers who are striving despite all the challenges and the stress they are passing through to achieve our vision, which is transformed into their minds and hearts to save the future of our country, Lebanon. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Chinan. Um, we really felt your passion as the school principal and you are really um, maintaining this uh, dynamics within your school, bringing other partners as well, really to let this whole school approach uh, be practiced and it's really, interesting also to hear that you're really encouraging also to teachers to self-evaluate and also to use this feedback to further to support their uh, self-development. So um, now I would like also to remind all uh, the audience that there is a chat box. If you have any questions or comments to our speakers today, or if you wish to share your experiences, really please feel free to uh, write down your ideas. Now I would like to turn to um, our final speaker, uh, Dr. Tehoncho. You will uh, share with us your observations, reflections about what enabling conditions, remaining challenges and opportunities if we really would like to make this transformation happen. Over to you. Thank you, June. Um, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, I'm Dehun Jo from Sungshin Women's University, Republic of Korea. As the final presenter, uh, I want to highlight major challenges in the imp implementation of GCED as transformative education at the global level and discuss enabling conditions and opportunities of GSET. Uh, by introducing South Korea's recent reformative initiatives. And I really thanks for three presenters who paved a meaningful 
background for my discussion. Um, this is global indicator 4.7.1. And when reading this 4.7.1, um, the word mainstream uh, grab our attention. Um, mainstreaming must be a difficult job and require multiple tasks. And we can come up with at least two uh, implication. You show those implication on this slide. And first, uh, it is essential for each country to monitor the mainstreaming of GCD or ESD in four areas, uh, national education policy, curriculum, teacher education, and student assessment. And the second possible impl implementation, implication is that the, considering the broad and generic nature, it is inevitable that the 4.7.1 should be adapted to each country's historical and social political context. So, um, at the global level across the countries uh, who, which endeavor the implementation and actualization of education for global citizenship, uh, I'd like to pinpoint of confronting challenges at four aspects. The monitoring system, the curriculum, and the teacher, and the student, and very briefly. And at the monitoring aspect, uh, experts and researchers indicated a lack of a baseline model, which is necessary for setting target goals for GCED indicators. Successful monitoring um, means evaluating not only the outcome, but also the process. And we only have the list of individual exemplary cases without adequate monitoring tools. And at the curriculum aspect, uh, there is a tendency that the global citizenship education or global citizenship is considered as a theme or a topic for daily lesson scattered across individual subjects, rather than the penetrating principle of organizing the curriculum. The penetrating theme of defining what a good citizen is and third, at the teacher education aspect, uh, GSET shows a very low status in both pre-service and in-service teacher training programs in many countries. And finally, but not the least, at the student aspect, the youngsters as learners are regarded as passive minors rather than active agents of change in many countries. So uh, what are enabling conditions and tasks for the mainstreaming of GSET? Uh, here I want to share with you recent reformative uh, cases of South Korea in the areas of the monitoring system, the curriculum, and the teacher education. Um, the APCU has launched a multi-year research project to develop the national monitoring framework of GSET. And I'm actually one of the research team members. And using mixed uh, methods, the goal of the research team is to develop a working framework of global indicator 4.7.1, especially contextualized for South Korea. And 
this table shows four target areas, uh, education policy, curriculum, uh, teacher education, and student assessment. And each target area has a group of objective and subjective indicators, sub-indicators, uh, that is a quantitative and qualitative sub-indicators. And for school curriculum, the Minister of Education had just unveiled a uh, freshly baked 2022 curriculum revision. And considering the history of the curriculum revision, the tone of global citizenship and global citizenship education are the strongest in this 2022 curriculum revision, explicitly articulating the keywords such as climate change, education for ecological transition, uh, transformative capacities, and capacities for global citizenship. Finally, the teacher education programs. For the in-service teacher training program, uh, South Korea has been running so-called the GC GCED uh, lead teacher programs uh, since 2015, based on the collaboration between the Ministry of Education, municipal and provincial uh, offices of education, and the APCU. By the year 2020, as you see the number in this infographic, the, um, the lead teacher programs has produced more than 3,000 lead teachers. Uh, these lead teachers are the agents of mainstreaming GSET in South Korea. And also for the pre-service teacher training programs, the Minister of Education has launched a four-year uh, initiative focusing on the promotion of pre-service teachers' capacities of citizenship education. And this underscores, as you see, three approaches, community-based approach and collaborative approach and the whole school approach. This um, is the uh, first stage of new initiative. In total, 12 colleges of education were selected and funded by the Minister of Education. And selected colleges of education implemented reformative programs, both curricular and extracurricular programs. And um, I'd like to wrap up my presentation by saying this. Uh, the mainstreaming of GSET based on the idea of a transformative education is a daunting task, but only possible by taking a collaborative approach toward these core areas, the curriculum, the teacher education, and the monitoring system. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Cho. Um, it was also helpful to maybe remind what are the key factors that we should still consider to push forward to this transformative education happen. So you were talking about curricula, uh, teacher training, monitoring. I think those are the areas. And it was very interesting to see the example of Korea, which has a, a very well structured mechanism already put in place. Thank you very much for that. I would now like to ask my colleague from IBE, Renato Operetti. Um, before giving him the floor, um, I just want to remind you that uh, the discussion summary will be shared on the discussion board. So please feel free to comment and add your ideas as well. You may not have chance to speak up today, uh, but uh, here is your chance. So now over to Renato to conclude. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Yun, and thank you so much, all, all the speakers. It was fantastic to listen to you. And really, this uh, session has generated a very engaging and very generous 
inter interrelational sharing of experience and ideas. Uh, just to try to be to wrap up a little bit and to synthesize some, some of the ideas, I'd like to mention five key points. Uh, the first one is about uh, they, they need to connect in the pieces. They need to connect knowledge, to connect foundational skills, to connect transversal skills, to connect interdependencies between skills and competencies. For what purpose? To educate autonomous, independent, self-efficacy learners. I mean, the idea that we have to have to connect the pieces to ensure that our learners have autonomy, autonomy of thinking, of action, and have also independence of opinion. That first idea was very clear about the connection of the pieces. And that connection of the pieces come from learning goals, learning goals, informing curriculum, pedagogy, and assessments as going hand in hand. The second element, that if we want to connect the pieces, we have to revisit the whole sequence of the teaching and learning process. We have to re, re, restructure the, the whole idea of the learning process, the whole idea of the teaching and learning process and the sequence of the learning. And also that implies rethinking the learning materials, the teaching materials, the tools, the pedagogical tools, the assessment tools. I mean, we have to revamp the curricula. <laughs> we have to re, revamp the curricula to ensure that we have a curricula that really serves to the purpose of, of educating young, proactive, autonomous, engaging learners. The third element that was very interesting was about the guidance, guidance to learners as well as teachers. And we talked very much about the engagement, the engagement of learners and students and engagement of learners and teachers also. It's not about one and the other one. It's about connecting teachers and learners. It's about connecting them under a common framework of understanding. And that implies a lot of emphasis on the metacognition aspects, both on teachers and students. The third element is the, the wonderful experience of Seychelles and Lebanon. And if you try to see the experience, they have commonalities. There are many elements that are common to the experience of Seychelles and to the experience of Lebanon. For example, the approach on the school, the whole school approach, the idea of working across levels of education, the idea of working on a global local education, of about integrating a sustainable development into all the curriculum, into all the subjects, about community support, about the green economy, about appropriation, appropriation and student production, not only product, student transmitter, not, not only being student transmitter of knowledge, being passive recipient of knowledge, but also be student producing knowledge, incentives, looking ahead, accountability, social emotional competencies, a comprehensive view of assessment, the idea of students as co-designers, as co-agents, that's a one, an idea that's very well framed by the OECD reports about students have been co-agents and co-producers of the curricula, as well as teachers. The idea of engaging learners, engaging different actors, teachers, stu teachers, students, parents, communities, uh, about peer connectivity and peer connection and peer collaboration and the culture of coaching. All these elements are in both studies. And this is what our friend Esther has very much said at the beginning. Seychelles and Lebanon are putting together what has been said in terms of the theoretical understanding of this. And finally, the, the last point is about what our colleague from South Korea has very nicely said about the need of an integrated systemic approach to our mainstreaming. Mainstreaming is not an isolated piece. Mainstreaming implies policies, implies curriculum, implies teachers' education, teacher professional development, implies assessment, implies pedagogical. And he, plan, he poses very well the, the debates, the debates about that we have a curriculum that really goes into what he called principles very guiding principles, sustainable is a guiding principle, it's not only an issue, about teachers being more, more active, about having students be more active in terms of their learning, about the importance of having global indicators, and in the importance of having this whole systemic approach where teachers and learners go hand in hand. Teachers and learners produce together, collaborate together, communicate together, and put the curriculum into action. And let me finalize by saying that this implies also rethinking the idea of curriculum. Curriculum is not about only the prescripted curricula or the implemented curricula. It's also about the experience curricula, how curricula is experienced by learners, by teachers, and how they connect the pieces to ensure that learning is meaningful and sustainable for all of them. So I think that at, by the end of this session, we have a very nice comprehensive agenda to move forward in the idea of transformation of education, of transformative education. And we see that that the theory of transformation can come into reality. 
we see reality here, reality going, and what we said about educational system, about the OECD report, that this is a progression. It's not going to be tomorrow, but we are on the right way. We are on the way, on the way to effectively implement curricula that's truly transformative, futuristic, forward-looking, and really helpful for sustainability of society at large. Back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Renato, for your very comprehensive uh, summarizing everything and also engaging at the same time. So now it comes to the end of our session. I, I really warmly want to thank all the speakers who joined today uh, on site, but also online, connected from different parts of the world. Thank you very much. Please stay well and uh, we will be in touch. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Bye bye. Thank you.